I learned a few things recently in Create Big Cannons and I wanted to share them with you. So here we go. So the first thing I want to share is that I was actually not putting fuses on my auto cannon rounds and it makes a huge difference whether or not you have a fuse on your round or not. Let me show you. Okay, so this is the unfused round. See how weak it is? So that was the unfused round. Look how weak that was. That was the flak round. So it can't even break stone and it has a hard time with even wooden planks. Now we're going to move on to the fused round and this is explosive. All right, so that's what it did against stone. I'm going to go ahead and shoot the ground a little bit, which is sandstone, which is weaker. And you'll see that it has even more of an effect. Okay, so a huge difference between fused and unfused flak rounds. Um, this was a proximity fuse, so it explodes a little bit before the target, and that might make a wider area of effect, because instead of just exploding when it's there, it explodes a bit before, so it has time to kind of spread out first. At least that's how I understand it. So there are other fuse types, which I'll show in just a minute, but first I'll show you how to craft this, because you can't get it straight from the creative inventory, you actually have to craft the uh, fused rounds together. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. So you go to the crafting table, you take your fuse and your round. So you'll see here that it says flak auto cannon round, and then it says fuse proximity fuse. And now I have a round with a fuse, and then I craft that with a filled auto cannon cartridge. And now it'll give me an auto cannon cartridge. It just says flak auto cannon round. It does not mention the fuse, but trust me, the fuse is there. Um, if I put this into a cannon and shoot it, um, you'll see that there's an explosion. So what about the other fuse types? Well, let's have a look. Just note that they only seem to work on the flak rounds and not the armor piercing rounds. All right, so here I've set up a few auto cannons with the different fuses. They all have flak rounds. I'm going to use this one first, which is the timed fuse. So let's see what this looks like. So you'll see I shoot and then even though there's nothing there, it'll explode. It's a one second timed fuse. So if I shoot at a target, it's not going to do anything because um, it hasn't had a second. So these are set to one second. And see, they don't explode on impact. However, if I shoot, well, one second out, it'll explode and it'll have an effect. This next one is the impact fuse. So if I just shoot out to the distance, Nothing's going to happen because it doesn't impact anything, but if I shoot at a target, well, it'll explode because it's an impact fuse. And if we shoot at the ground, we'll see it has a bigger effect. This last one is the timed impact fuse. So if I shoot at a target, it'll hit it, but it's not exploding right away. Actually, it doesn't look like it's working. So this is the first time I tried out. Um, it seems that the delayed impact fuse makes it so that it doesn't explode right away. I don't know if there's a way to make it um, explode shortly after it hits the target, maybe a different material uh, that I'm shooting at, or if it just does not currently work for the uh, flat rounds. So something else that I wanted to share is that for auto cannons, um, they will often start to shoot slowly. So in order to always be able to shoot at the max rate, you need to have either two hoppers or a shoot system. So what I've set up here, I have three examples. On the left is an auto cannon with only one hopper. In the middle, I have two hoppers. And on the right, I have a shoot. So I'll start firing. And then you'll see that the one on the left will eventually slow down because the hopper can't keep up with the demand. So the auto cannon itself is able to store a few rounds, which is what happens now. So that's why at first it'll shoot quickly, but then it'll slow down. So you see the two auto cannons on the right kept firing at the maximum rate while the one on the left eventually slowed down. So something else that I want to share is that the length of the barrel actually matters on the auto cannons. I didn't know this for a while, so I was making planes with short barreled cannons because I thought it looked better, but really the projectiles were coming out slowly. So I've set up some auto cannons here. Um, the shortest has one barrel and it goes up to six barrels. Uh, the maximum length for a steel auto cannon is eight length total, and that includes the chamber and the recoil spring. So I'm going to go ahead and fire these, and you'll see that the longer the barrel, the faster the projectile.
By the way, you'll see that they explode at a certain point. Um, these are equipped with proximity fuses, and I'm not sure why they're exploding. Um, maybe they detect the ground and they explode. I'm not quite sure why this is happening. Um, I've tested it out with um, a controlled autocannon, and it seems that the closer to the horizon that I shoot, well, it'll eventually explode at some point. Maybe it's not exactly straight and it has a slight downward slope. I don't know. Um, it's just something I've observed just now. So another thing is that I was curious if the material of the autocannon had any effect. I know that for cast iron autocannons, the maximum barrel length is, well, the maximum length is four. So what I've done is I've set up an equal length steel cannon and cast iron cannon. And I wanted to see if the projectiles were faster in one or the other. So the advantage of a steel autocannon over a cast iron autocannon then is that the steel autocannon can just be longer and shoot faster. So for their equal length cannons, there's no advantage over one or the other. So finally, I wanted to test out an autocannon on a plane that I built. So I built this plane using Clockwork, which is an add-on for Valkyrian Skies. Um, I've added some armor to it using uh, sheet metal from Create Deco. So let's see how well my plane stands up to an autocannon. So this is the damage from just a few shots. Let's really go crazy on this and see what the total damage is. So just to note, this plane will still fly because it has enough fuel tanks um, and the wing is still largely intact. So this would not be fatal damage for the plane. So let's really go crazy here and give it a lot of damage. It even made the plane turn around. Uh, wow. All right, so the damage is pretty substantial. I don't think this would fly anymore, or at least the um, elevator controls seem to be broken. Um, the fuel system uh, it would still feed the engine, but it's pretty beat up. Oh, yeah, so I lost aileron control here. The cannons are damaged. But I think the engine is okay. Yeah, the engine would be intact. So really this is still, <laughs> I'd only have one aileron. That's the only way I'd have to control the plane anymore. So really this would be, this would be uncontrollable and essentially out of the fight. So that's, I mean, that shows you the power of the fused autocannon rounds, the fused flak rounds. This is fun. So I'm just going to shoot this again. <laughs> Oh, poor plane. This plane was, oh boy, this is, yeah. So I think this is destroyed. You know, this isn't going to go anywhere. Um, the bottom is not even connected to the top anymore. Um, this is dead. That was kind of fun blowing this up. I should do this more often. All right, so for anyone who wanted to make planes to fight people, keep this in mind, just how powerful these rounds are. Probably evasion is your best bet at avoiding uh, destruction from autocannon rounds. Kind of like real planes, right? It's more about dodging. Um, there might be a bit of armor in strategic places. Um, armor does add weight. So I think if you're going to armor your plane, you're going to want to cover um, just the most vital areas. Uh, what I've done is I've actually put less critical systems covering more critical systems. So... What I mean by that is in my designs, I've put fuel tanks around things like shafts that uh, control the elevators. I've made them go behind the fuel tanks. So the fuel tanks, yes, you need fuel, but if a few of your fuel tanks blow up, that's not a huge deal compared to if the shaft that's powering your elevators breaks, right? So if that breaks, it's game over. So by putting your more critical systems behind less critical ones, uh, you increase the survivability of your plane. So that's all I wanted to show you. I hope this is useful for you. Um, I know these things, when I discovered them, they really improved the way that I could use autocannons. And I hope this uh, improves the way that everyone else uses it. So thank you for watching.